everyone, welcome back to The Good Bite. I hope you guys are having a good week. I hope it's been filled with lots of good food and of course, lots of good feels. So today we are gonna be doing a chicken katsu curry. We're gonna be recreating the Wagamama's classic um, and we're actually gonna make ours and then we're gonna order a takeaway katsu curry and then we're going to compare the two and then you guys can let us know which one you think's best if you think i did a good job and then we'll maybe like talk about the comparisons in terms of calories and how they might cook theirs compared to how we cooked ours um we did this type of video a couple weeks ago two three the, the chicken nando's piri piri chicken burger and you guys seem to really like that style of video so we're gonna do another one and it's gonna be the chicken katsu curry Let's do it. So a chicken katsu curry is gonna consist of the curry sauce, obviously. It's usually served on rice and it comes with a delicious, crispy, breaded chicken breast. So we're gonna do the chicken breast first. And I have a chicken breast ready down here. So we're gonna butterfly and bash. So butterfly, you wanna get your chicken breast on the board. You wanna place your palm down on top of the chicken breast, get a nice sharp knife, and we're gonna slice through the middle just like that and then it opens up like that. So we've got two thinner fillets now, and then we're gonna go one step further. <laughs> and then we're gonna cover with cling film and bash. Cool, so that's looking really good so far. Two nice thin Fillets, and then I'm just gonna lightly season those like that. Okay, and we can set that to one side for just a second. Now I've got some panko breadcrumbs, which are better for this than your sort of normal breadcrumbs. You can get your hands on panko ones there. They're just a little bit better. Um, some plain flour and two eggs. So I like to actually put a little bit of seasoning and flavor in these individual components because it just is going to result in a much tastier chicken breast. So to the egg mixture, I'm just going to add a little bit of our good old salt and pepper seasoning from the Cornish. Sea salt company. What is it? Cornish, Cornish Sea Salt Company. That's the one. Uh, you guys have probably seen us use that before because it's really, really good. Um, and then so the flour, I think that's probably the most important part to season because that is what, we're gonna double coat it in the flour. And that is, I don't know, I just feel like that soaks up the most flavor and adds it to the chicken breast. So a tiny bit of cayenne pepper, just for just a little bit of heat, not too much. And then same with the paprika, probably about quarter of a teaspoon of each. We want it to be quite, quite subtle. We don't want it to be like too paprika-y, sort of start tasting like some kind of Spanish chicken breast, if you know what I mean. Uh, and then a little bit of the seasoning again, just because I think this seasoning just tastes wonderful. And you can be a little bit generous with that because it's gonna all be soaked up and it's gonna be part of a bigger dish, so it's not gonna be too overpowering. And then finally, for the breadcrumbs, just a bit of seasoning again. And then just mix that up. I like that technique, dear. Look at that, the little bowly spinny spinny with the old fork action as well. And then we've got our breadcrumbs there. Lovely, lovely stuff. So you guys might have seen this little technique before, I guess you would call it a technique. What we do is we take our chicken breast and up. And we're gonna dip it in the flour first over here, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> dip it in that flour. I thought you were going egg first. So I was like, where am I going? Coat that nicely. And then we're gonna go into the egg. And then we're gonna do something called double dipping. So you could just go straight into the breadcrumbs now, but we're gonna go back to the flour, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just gonna really make sure that, that it picks up the breadcrumbs very well. Also that seasoning and that flavor that we added to the flour is getting it, gonna get double the chance basically to soak up into that chicken breast and then back into the egg. This just ensures that you're not gonna be left with any bits uncovered basically. And then, finally into our panko breadcrumbs. Twist and turn it about, 
try and make sure every little inch is covered. And there you go, that's our breaded chicken breast. And then obviously you're gonna repeat that for the next one. And then we're gonna go over to the hob to cook our katsu curry sauce. So a splash of olive oil in a non-stick pan, and then two small carrots. But you don't wanna put too many carrots in, right? Because it ends up becoming a little bit like a carrot puree, if you're not careful. So don't go overboard on the carrots. And then one nice white onion, just chopped. We're gonna blend all this up anyway, so how big the, uh, they are doesn't really matter too much. And we're just gonna fry that for about five minutes until that starts to soften down. So these have been cooking down for about five minutes. They're nice and soft. Now we're gonna go in with a decent sized cube of ginger, finely chopped, and three cloves of garlic, finely chopped as well. We're gonna fry these down for about 30 seconds to a minute. You're gonna start smelling the wonderful fragrances coming from the garlic and the ginger, which is beautiful. And then we're gonna add a few more little bits in. And then we're gonna go in with two tablespoons of curry powder one heaped teaspoon of turmeric and depending on how spicy you want it about a quarter to a half a teaspoon of chili powder or cayenne pepper doesn't matter too much right now then we're going to give that a good mix up all of a sudden it smells like a katsu curry doesn't it and then a little splash of water which is going to create almost a paste you're going to simmer that for about a minute or two Starting to look and smell very, very good. And then we've got about 300 milliliters of chicken stock. That's reduced salt chicken stock, just because we don't want to have too much salt in our diets. Give that a good stir, bring it to a simmer, and we're going to leave that to cook for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to blend it up. Okay, so this is our katsu curry sauce at the moment. It's looking and smelling pretty wonderful already. So there's a couple other bits we need to add to this before it will be ready. And we need to fry our chicken. Well, fry then bake. That's what we're gonna do, isn't it? We're gonna shallow fry and then we're gonna, we're gonna bake. And that is one difference. Well, because I still want a nice golden crispy chicken breast, so I do think it's important to fry it in oil somewhat, but we don't want to deep fry it. So we shallow fry it, a bit less oil, and then we'll just put it in the oven to bake just to make sure that it's all cooked through. So I have got my oven preheated. Recommend doing that to yours if you haven't already. And then get your blender. You've still got a lot of flavor in there as well as quantity. So it's just water added to it. It's gonna simmer down anyway. Get that on a medium heat. So have a look at that sauce. It's looking pretty bloody good already, if you do ask me. Um, but we're gonna add some light coconut milk. I like to just give it a little stir because sometimes it's all stuck at the bottom. To be fair, the light stuff tends to not be. It's more of the full fat coconut milk. I'm just gonna add this in gradually. So I'm just gonna use half of this tin. So that's about 200 milliliters. Right, so we need a couple more bits of flavor. So about a tablespoon of soy sauce is gonna go in there. A little bit of our seasoning. And then a little bit of sweetness with some honey, about a tablespoon of honey in there. Mix well, and then we're gonna bring it to a simmer, and then we're gonna cook our chicken whilst this simmers down. Obviously, this is quite runny at the moment. We want it a lot thicker than that before we serve. So we're just gonna continue to simmer this down until we get the desired consistency and texture within our sauce. Is that okay? Is that all right with you? Very professional. Is that all right with you guys? That's what I'm doing. Don't care if it's, if it's all right or not. So yeah, let's put that to one side. We're gonna get our chicken going in there. 
Three, two, one. Sizzling. Sizzling away. Got it on a high heat. Just want to get that colour in the breadcrumbs and then we're just sort of going to bake it basically. And after a few minutes, flip. Oh, look at that. Golden brown, crispy, juicy, inspired. That's my master chef. What's his name? Greg Wallace. That's my Greg Wallace impression. Inspired. The chicken breast is inspired. And then after a few minutes, we we'll set that aside and then repeat for the next chicken breast. So this has just been delivered to my front door. Obviously it's takeaway. I'm going to attempt, hopefully I can, oh, look at that. How do they do that? How do they do that? Um, obviously I'm, I am, I know I'm doing Wagamama's dirty here because this is not how you get it in a restaurant, right? But, I kind of want to win this anyway, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> if I have to throw Wagamama's under the bus, I'm happy to do it as long as I look good. <laughs> and then this is their sauce. <laughs> it's very, th very thick, isn't it? A bit, bit gloopy, one might say, but it does taste very nice. Uh, how do they do it? Right, round, round the side, don't they? Sorry, Waggers. <laughs> I didn't know how to do that exactly. If you go to a Wagger Mama's restaurant, it's going to come looking a million times better than that. So we'll, we'll add some garnish to, to help them out. There you go. Perfect. This is my chicken breast. You can see the difference in colour. I'm going to say that's probably down to the frying, I would, I would imagine. Ready for the crisp. Wow. Wow. Wow, and more wows. So in terms of the thickness of the chicken breast, actually pretty similar, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's very good. Oh, and then the this is- a bit more darker, isn't it? Bit darker, yeah. And then this is our sauce, which is probably the biggest difference between the two. Um, ours actually tastes a lot sweeter. There's a bit more salty. Um, I think our consistency is better. It's nicer, isn't it? So, one thing left to do, get the rice. So I am cheating slightly with the packet rice, but what we're gonna do is get a little small bowl. We're going to attempt to make something similar to that. It's, more, it's gonna be more of a dome, right? So it's not gonna be in the shape that they had it. So what you need to do is pack it in, and then you need to press it down. And then... <laughs> A moment of truth. Should put it there. Okay, moment of truth. Drum roll, please. Ta da! Look at that, that's good, isn't it? I'm pleased with that. And then, so we're going to try and sort of replicate what they do in the restaurant. So we've got our chicken breast. They seem to put it around the edge, kind of scatter it about a little oh, bit. Nice. And then. There's one thing left to do, and that is add our sauce. So I'm just gonna pour it into this jug so I can pour it nicely around here, otherwise I might ruin the aesthetics of the dish. So I'm gonna go for around and on top of the rice. That's, that's basically what you have to do. So. So I have been joined by Megan and Megan's lovely mum, Helga. <laughs> and I got them on board to do a little taste test. Now, first of all, so it's a chicken katsu. Are you familiar with the chicken katsu? No. Have you ever had not? it before? Have I not? You know, wa you know Wagamama's? I think so. You, have you been to Wagamama's? I though? have. You have. So which one, it's, I think you'll be able to guess, but which one do you think is mine? Which one do you think was Wagamama's. made by Wagamama's? Oh, I think that one's Riley's. 
Yeah, it is. No, Elise. It looks Love better. It. Mama. <laughs> this is whack a mama. So this, no, to be fair to them, this is a takeaway. This is probably not what they're going to serve you in that restaurant. Looks delicious. Okay, you can so. Way more sauce in the restaurant. There you go. You guys can have a taste and oh, so have let me know what you think. It's not necessarily about being better or worse. It can it. be different. Yeah. Now you try that one, man. You see what the difference. But we do need to save this for dinner tonight, guys. So don't don't eat it all. I mean, you can for sure. A bit more salty, theirs, isn't it? But I think yours is more succulent. Succulent, yeah. Maybe it is the maybe it is all that seasoning in the in the flour from the chicken. The carrots, yeah. So the only thing is, I make mine with the carrots with carrots blended up, which. Sometimes if you make it too thick or too many carrots, it comes out like a puree, but mm. we've managed to avoid that today. Wagamama's is good, of course, because Wagamama's is excellent. Yeah. <laughs> super, super excellent. <laughs> I'll give you that tenner later. <laughs> Here's that tenner. Oh, wait for dinner. Right, guys. <laughs> That is me done for today. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and if you want to see more of this style of video, then let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Thank you to you two for joining me. Thank you to Carl, as always, and have a good week, guys. See you later.